Hey, good morning. Before today's sermon, as always, we just want to give God thanks with song, and then we'll do a prayer, and then we'll get to our sermon. Amen. Oh, my peace. Oh, my peace. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Heavenly Father, we just come before you humbly today, Lord, thanking you for another opportunity to share your word, Lord, to hear your word, Lord, to take in your word, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the eyes that have opened, Lord, the ears that are still hearing, Lord, the breath that is still pumping in our bodies, Lord. And we thank you for finding mercy throughout the night to keep us here, Lord. And for those that have passed on, Lord, we thank you for the grace to take them at peace, Lord. We we offer love out to this world, Lord. We offer joy. We offer you out to this world, Lord, as servants of you, Lord. And as we walk in the world, as we talk in the world, Lord, as we think in this carnal world, Lord, we ask that your light shine through all our actions, Lord, that you are in the midst of everything we do, Lord. And as we sometimes stumble and fall, Lord, we ask that you pick us up, Lord, that you dust us off, Lord, and that you Tell us that you will have some trials and tribulations, but I will always be there for you. Lord, we just thank you for being there for us. Lord, we thank you for all that you continue to do, for all that you continue to give, for all the love, mercy, and grace that has been bestowed upon us, not deservingly, but because of who the giver is. Lord, we thank you for sitting on high and looking lowly, Lord, to find us, Lord, to see us, Lord, in our iniquities and our sins and our transgressions, Lord against you, Lord. We fall for wanting to please ourselves and not please you, Lord, and we thank you for still waiting patiently to let us come back to you, Lord. So in your mighty son's name, Lord, we praise you today. We thank you today, Lord, and we understand that we will go through some things, Lord, but we also understand that we have conquered everything because of you, Lord, and we come to you humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I thought this week I would go through some of the hardships that we are facing these days as we all try not to suffer, not to go through things as we find it uncomfortable. I want you to know that the Lord sees you. The Lord knows your wants and needs, but we are working through these journeys and walking through these journeys. We are to stand strong on our faith and let our worldly problems know that we serve a God that has defeated everything. But sometimes we forget this. Sometimes doubt steps into our mind and we start asking God, why me? But the question that you as a disciple of Jesus should be asking is, why not me? My scripture today comes from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 through 10, and it reads as follows. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not explained, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes and imprisonments and tumults and labors and watchings and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. We always ask the Lord, why me? But if I truly sat down and said for all of the deliverance that I have received, for all of the love that I have received, for the new covenant of mercy and grace, for the blood that was bled on the cross, and for the new covenant that I am under and for the great sacrifice I would ask what today's sermon is titled 
Why not me? See, when you look at this passage, and this passage is about Paul's suffering, but what I see is truly a passage of God's deliverance. I know that we may not want to concentrate on Paul's suffering and our suffering, but do you truly ever sit there and look at the truth of the situation, which is God's deliverance? We all want to be delivered. We all want to be rescued. And we all want to tell someone that we made it through the storm. We know that weapons are coming. We know the world hates us. And we know that loving the Lord and suffering for the Lord seems tough at times. But as you go through this passage of scripture, and I truly want you to answer the question. Why not me? Our suffering was, is, and will continue to be about the Lord. Job told you about when we were born that we will suffer. So man is already going to have some issues. But how do you stop suffering? And what is the true question? Paul speaks in this passage, and I started with verse 3 for a reason. Paul says that he will do anything for the ministry that went from speaking it in and out of season. Anything that Paul may have done that was not pleasing to man was not the fault of the ministry. And Paul was truly speaking on being true to the word. Now, after I see Paul recognizing himself and giving actual praise to the Lord, because Paul was not going to be a stumbling block to anyone, even with his suffering and with how he preached and served. So now we step into the simple fact that Paul and those with Paul wanted to stay true ministers to the Lord, even while going through their afflictions. Now, when we speak of trials, tribulations, and afflictions, we speak of our suffering. But when I hear them, I can speak to God's deliverance. Or as I stated, why not me? How do you approve yourselves in times of trouble? By standing strong on the word of God. Jesus had not eaten or drank anything for 40 days and he was led into the wilderness by the spirit to be tested. And I think that I have a problem because you called me out my name, my skin color offends you, or you just don't like who I am. Mm. See, Jesus humbly went onto the task at hand and stay strong in the word of God and made the devil flee. Maybe we should stand strong in the word of God and make the devil flee. Jesus said, why not me? My father has a task at hand and I know that his world is coming at me. But my father has said to me in John, 1 John 4 and 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So, do you believe that he that is greater is in you and is greater than he that is in the world? And if you do, I ask again, why not me? If you look at Paul's plight, he starts off with the deliverance factor, patience. And that patience works on his afflictions. You know that constant pain or distress like Paul had in his side, like your anger issues, like our sins against God, and like our hatred instead of love towards certain folks. That deliverance factor has that 
power. It has that. And then it steps into the other afflictions and sufferings that they were going through. See, this, this patience was a, a great weapon for Paul to have because it helped him endure like it will help you endure. See, we need to be able to take some losses from the world because that just lets the Lord show off. And we all need some endurance in our suffering because some of us are quick to respond instead of taking the time to call on the Father and asking for guidance. See, Paul then says to even endure in stripes or as we know your beatings. See, when, when you have been beat for the word of God and you say, endure this beating. God got you. God will continue to have you. And some of you are beaten for just speaking the word of God. You know, oh, no, here comes that holy roller. They are always talking about Jesus or some you can't even hang out with anymore, your friends and your family, because you got that God speak. Endure. You may lose some family and friends, but you have a friend in Jesus. And you are co-heirs to the kingdom with your brother. Those beatings and stripes may seem like much, but when you look at the deliverance that the Lord always has for his children, then once again, why not me? See, Paul is speaking about his reasons for why not me? And the question that you should be asking yourself is can you talk about why not me? See, have you been perfect in all of your doings? Have you loved everybody and shown compassion to everyone? Do you have a righteous judgment? Did you leave glory to atone for everybody else's sins? Well, if you did not, and we know that Jesus did, then you should be asking, why not me? See, Paul understands why he is going through what he goes through. And it is for the gospel. And Paul says that I may have some issues as we all do. But Paul does see the beauty in his suffering because in his weakness, God's deliverance abounds. See, if you look at verse 6 of the passage, Paul starts sending out endurance weapons. God's delivery weapons and reverence for what the Lord continues to do for him. And sometimes in your suffering, do you see so much of the suffering or have you gotten strong enough where you can look to and see that deliverance? See, remember that Paul is just like us and some of us have his suffering was self-inflicted because he was working, he was fasting, not sleeping and so on and Paul chose to do these things and he knew he needed to do these things but they all go back to how Paul started the passage out with his patience because these things happen immediately to us somebody comes up and says something wrong Somebody mistreats us. Things don't go our way. They happen immediately. But our patience, that weapon, that's what gets us through these things. But the answer may require some time. Once again, that patience, that waiting on the Lord, that patience. So you might have to endure some things while you're in your way. You might have to persevere some things while you are waiting. Can you wait on the Lord? Because he has been waiting on you to stand stronger, to listen more closely 
and to see that whenever you are suffering and weak, you get grace. And then it speaks to being glad about it. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10, it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches in necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So you mean when I suffer, I get grace? You mean that my strength is made perfect in my weakness? So celebrate my infirmities because Christ's power is upon me? Yes. Once again, why not me? I'll take pleasure in knowing that the Lord is with me in my time of suffering and he continues to give to me at this time. In other words, Stop looking at the suffering and start looking at the deliverance. Paul sees the deliverance as he starts to express it in verses 6 and 7. And you should ask yourself, do you always see the suffering or do you see the deliverance? Because if you see the suffering, then you will ask, why me? But if you see the deliverance, you will ask, why not me? I told my mother the other week about some things that I was going through, and she said, well, how do you feel? And I said, Mom, I'm good, and the reason I was good is because I was patiently waiting for the Lord to deliver me. Stop thinking that you will not go through some things, because you will, but concentrate more on the Lord delivering you. Paul was so strong to why not me that suffering was a common practice in his life. But that also meant that deliverance, let me repeat that, that also means that deliverance was a common practice in his life. God has some major weapons, resources that you can utilize in your time of need, and are you using them? See, Paul knew that the Lord, knew the Lord and knew what the Lord had for him to use. And the question would be, do you know, do you know what the Lord has for you and the weapons that he has for you to use? Because if you know what the Lord has for you, then you will be saying again, why not me? See, Jesus knew what the Lord had for him in the wilderness, and you are in the wilderness right now, so do you know? If not, Paul starts throwing out what he used to get through these things. Purity. He stays pure in all that you do. By knowledge, know your limits and know to call on the Lord, and don't try to fight the devil and his traps for you because that was and is not your job. Call on the Lord and speak his word into the matter. Be long-suffering, and it hurts. It hurts sometimes, but suffer until it hurts. If Jesus can be pierced in his side, spit on, nailed to a cross, and beaten, to say the least, then you can handle a few hot tempers. You can handle some naysayers or the vulgar person that can never speak to you correctly. Be kind and please note that this action is not, and I repeat, is not based on their actions, but off of your actions. Knowing that you are a child of God and knowing that the Lord's kindness has forgiven you. Be led by the Holy Spirit so that your actions and words are in wisdom and in the ways of a true disciple of Christ. This is the painful one because it ties it all together. And that is, we do all of this in love. 
And this love is from God and obedience to God. So if God loved you and your iniquities and your sinful ways and my sinful nature, then you have an obligation to love others the same way. But keep looking at Paul because he says, I can get the word of truth. The power that I have is by God. And then he says, I get a wardrobe called the armor of righteousness. And it is on the right and the left. And in my heart and mind, it truly says that I can protect myself on one side and keep moving forward on the other side. In my suffering, and we know that Paul has suffered more than we have. But in all of this, I see God's delivering power. So once again, why not me? None of us want to suffer, but we all, we all want to be delivered. And the fact of the matter is, this deliverance lets you know that you have a relationship with a serving and saving God. I need that relationship. And if you need that relationship, then stop seeing your suffering and start seeing your deliverance. See, the world is going to tell you how hard it is. I would tell that person off if I was you. I wouldn't stand for that. Where is your God at now? And accept the things that I put in your senses from television to radio to man's ways to abominations against God. But just like Paul says, that is how the world sees things. As you see him speak through verses 8 and 10. See, the world has this way of seeing things. But, but look at verses 8 and 10. But one way is how the world sees a child of God. And the other is how God sees his children. And me personally... I'd rather be honor to the Lord than dishonor to the world. The world can give me an evil report as long as the Lord gives me a good report. We are deceivers to the world when we speak the true word of God. And you can see how the world sees us in comparison to the Father. The fact of the matter is that you will go through both of your footsteps with the Lord and the world might lift you up and it might tear you down but remember the truth is no matter how the world perceives you your God knows your heart we are not deceivers when we speak the true word of God but some may say that it is not the true word of God and this can be believers and non-believers because we sometimes love our word and world more than the Lord. So keep speaking the true doctrine of the Lord. And when we do any of God's work, let the Lord's light continue to shine in the world. Paul continues to talk about his suffering. He says, you thought that I was dead and behold, I got up. You beat me like a disobedient child and I was not killed. So even in these afflictions, Paul was delivered so once again, why not me? Understand that Paul's preservation, preservation, and your preservation and perseverance is the proof that you please God. Receiving gifts from the Spirit tells you that you are pleasing God. Having patience, love, compassion, the ability to repent and to do it and striving to be better than who you are. And I repeat, who you were yesterday pleases God. So why not me? The world may see what you are going through if you are going through it. And mock your faith and heckle you. But rejoice. Give God even more praises because he is about to show out in your life. Because the world is concentrating on on how your father will deliver you and how you go through this. We are not sorrowful if we are always rejoicing. It may look that way to the world, but we find joy in our suffering. Jesus looked poor, 
but he was so wealthy in his spirit that he could give some away to his disciples. He could teach a, touch a leper and the leper be healed. And even the hem of his cloak could be touched in faith and the woman be healed. A child of God is never poor, poor because we have no true treasures on or in this world. Our treasures aren't dependent on material things. Our treasures aren't dependent on man's thoughts of us. See, our treasures are the glory. See, because our Father has all the riches in his kingdom. And as I stated earlier, I am and you are a co-heir to that inheritance. So in closing, if you have all of this going on for you, then maybe you should look more at your deliverance instead of your suffering because God is still and has always been in the delivering business. And if that is the case, then maybe you can ask your own question of, why not me? Amen.